Well, it's a little dark and dingy out, and I'm gonna take this for a little cruise through these trees and around here a little bit. I've been having some issues with this crossfire stuff. It's almost sundown, but it's pretty much been like this all day. I got the Caddx uh, Nano camera on the drone, and that's not good in low light, so hopefully I don't hit any scraggle, because I want to go down that way and get some, I got it set on auto, and I have it on uh, 50 frames per second, and a shutter speed set at 100, I think. Or did I do 120? I'm so used to shooting at 60 frames a second. I think I put it at 120. So it might even be a little darker. And you might not get a very good motion blur, but we'll see how it looks. I like flying in auto because I don't get so many, you know, drastic exposure changes. It's always best if you can. I didn't have an ND filter. I didn't think I needed one even though I like to have one no matter what. Uh, the sun was actually peeping through when I left the house, so we'll see how it goes. You know what, now that I think about it, uh, this camera, this SMO, it's not bad. I mean, it's good for fun stuff. And that little drone won't really carry uh, GoPro. I am getting, you know, three minutes of flight time with that Caddx in there. With the, uh, when it was analog, when I bought it, I was getting about four and a half, almost five. So the extra weight, the extra power it draws is uh, shortening my lifetime. Some of these batteries are getting a little old, but I don't see, I don't see me ever getting four minutes. I've even turned it down to, you know, 250 milliwatts. So the Insta360 Go 2, which I'm talking on right now, is a 50 frames per second. And there you'd want to shoot at 100, 1 100th shutter speed. And the SMO does 60 frames per second. And I had it set at 120, I'm pretty sure. So it might be a little dark. I might be able to brighten that up a little bit on uh, Premiere and uh, we'll see. You know, I'm not a camera expert and I'm not a drone expert, but I buy these cameras and they're not cheap. And they are better than the DJI cameras that come when you buy an HD. Because of the stabilization and some of the settings you can put on them. So I'm not trying to claim to be a camera expert. I'm just trying to share what I learned. That way you can make a decision whether you want to buy this or not. If, if it's good enough for you. It's not good enough for professional work. Although I have gotten some really good footage. If you got the right ND filter on this SMO camera, probably the, the Insta360 also, and the lighting's just right, and the shutter speed and everything's set just right, your white balance, and you're flying just right, it can look really good, especially, especially if you color grade it right, or if you shoot, uh, I normally don't shoot in the log, but. If you shoot in the log, you can eliminate some of those white balance issues and some of those exposure changes. So anyway, I'm just sharing what I learn because I can, and then hopefully people can make a decision because these are investments and these things, uh, uh, you know, you, you will break them. I had the original Insta360 go and I broke it and you could not fix it. You could not change the lens. I broke the lens. I had a fail safe. I was going to film this business park. And as soon as I got to the bottom of the other hill, I fail safe. But I was still about 12 feet, 15 feet in the air, maybe more. And crashed right into the concrete. Broke the lens on the camera. And that was it. 
that camera was done for absolutely worthless i think it was at least two hundred dollars so buyer beware and be careful with these if you can buy a protective case it's probably best